Erin Coos is partner at Sherrard Coos Law Firm located in Toronto. She spoke with us about Ministry of Labour inspections. What do employers need to know about their obligations and about the rights of Ministry of Labour inspectors? The rights of the inspectors and the obligations of the employer are both very, very broad. For instance, an inspector can come in and look at records. They can come in without a warrant and access your computer systems. In fact, they can require your assistance to access your computer systems. They can come in and speak to any of your employees without you or counsel present. They can come in at any time of day that the business is operational. And frankly, if they choose to be, they can be quite disruptive and they have the right to do all of those things. As an employer, you have an obligation to cooperate in that inspection. And cooperate means giving the information that's requested, providing access to the computer systems if necessary, providing access to your employees. What can employers do to avoid an inspection in the first place? Well, the easy answer is be compliant because many of these systems are complaint driven. So unlike, pardon me, unlike some other systems, it's not the case, at least it's not the case as much anymore, that you're just going to have somebody show up on your doorstep and say, hi, we pulled your name out of a hat, we're going to do an inspection now. Particularly with health and, sorry, particularly with uh, employment standards. That one has become very much a complaint driven system. So the best way to keep yourself off the inspection list is to make sure that your employees aren't filing complaints. That starts with making sure that you're compliant and certainly open to hearing from your employees if they think that you're not doing something in a way that's compliant and being open to fix it. So that's certainly the best way. And what are some misconceptions about the powers of Ministry of Labor inspectors? I think the first one is that they have to provide you with notice. Now, many of them do, particularly when you're dealing with WSIB or ESA inspections, when they are very document heavy and they want you to produce documents, you will very often get what we call the heads up letter. So we'll be visiting you on X date, we'd like you to provide the following documents for our inspection, and if you're lucky enough to get the heads up letter, there are definitely some steps you want to take to make the inspection as painless as possible. Make sure that you put together the documents that they've asked for. Because if those documents exist, as I said earlier, they have broad rights and they don't have to leave without them. So the last thing you want is somebody hanging around for three hours while you look up those documents. You want to provide the inspector with a private, quiet place to work. And it sounds quite funny, but with direct access to a washroom if at all possible. Remember, the inspectors can walk through the workplace if they want to. And if they just happen to stop and chat with one of your employees and maybe start asking about your overtime practices or maybe something that they weren't really there to look at to begin with, then you might have a whole new problem on your hands. So you want to greet them warmly at the door, you want to make sure you provide all of the documents that they've requested, and where those documents may be in your workplace are only available in electronic form, print them off so that they've actually got something they can look at, and again, so that they're not inviting themselves into your computer system uh, with your assistance. So that would be the first thing is, if they provide advance notice, do those things, but understand they don't have to provide advance notice. So if somebody shows up at the door, Again, you don't have the right to say, you didn't tell me you were going to be here, I'm not letting you in. So that's probably the first biggest misconception. The second is that you have the right to have counsel present when they're doing an inspection or that you can be present when they interview your employees. Again, not the case. They have the right to speak to any worker alone. They have the right to speak to you alone. And you don't have the right to have counsel present, although again, some of them will permit you to. Some of them like to work with counsel. Some of the ministry inspectors are very reasonable. You get to know them and build relationships with them when you do what we do. And sometimes if you pick up the phone and say, our client such and such just called, can we talk about the inspection that's coming up? Um, they'll want to work with you if you have a good reputation because they know that it'll make their jobs a little easier. And the last thing is, that all inspect inspections will lead to orders and that all inspectors are unreasonable. Uh, in our view, that is largely a misconception, but it really depends on how the tone of the relationship is set early on. So if you happen to get that heads up letter and you don't think you're going to be able to meet the deadline to pull everything together, call the inspector. Say, listen, here's what I have together. You're more than welcome to come out on that date and look at it. I'm still working on the additional payroll records, what have you. How would you like to proceed? They really appreciate that.